know why I feel this way Every day I wanna run away I think I'll go back to that place I stay Play on the server the time shot way Hello people, it's Poet And we're back on time shot What I wanted to talk about today is kind of important Again, one of those long talks, I'm sure um, but there's also going to be some building, I think, as well. Um, oh man, my ear just started to ring. You know that when your ears start to ring? Man, that's annoying. Um, I don't know if there's some kind of a, I think the superstition used to be, uh, you know, if someone's talking about you in the future, uh, once you're dead or something like that, isn't it? Like someone... Someone's walking over your grave was the old superstition. I, d I don't know if that's true. I could be wrong. But there was always some kind of a little superstition there when your ears were ringing. Um, it was that someone uh, someone out there in some alternate dimension, uh, an alternate reality, some kind of a futuristic world <laughs> uh, is talking about you. Um, I don't know. For... As seldom as my ears ring, I hope I hope people remember me, <laughs> if that's the case. But anyway, on a much less uh, morbid note, uh, this episode, I'm basically just finishing some stuff up before the world download. Um, by the time you guys see this, the world download will probably be out already, unless I do some just amazing magic wizardry and and get uh, three episodes out in three days and then even if I do that um, you guys are gonna have the world download before I I post this so no matter what I do I got three episodes right now to post uh, I posted one today it's the 23rd today and we're releasing the world download on the 26th so I've got three episodes you do the math three days the 27th is the earliest I could post this if I post uh, basically five days straight of nothing but time shot episodes, um, which probably isn't going to happen uh, unless I'm nuts. And I am nuts, so maybe maybe it'll happen. I don't know. I don't know. We'll see how I feel uh, once I sit back and think about it. Uh, let's see. I'll just put those in there, put those in there. I've been using charcoal. I think it's a pretty good use of... Uh, where is it? All this uh, is a pretty good use um, stack of that. Gives me a stack of charcoal. And it doesn't use up more than eight pieces of coal to make it. So I've been uh, making use of that as much as I possibly can. Hey, Two potatoes? There we go. Just keep putting them in there. And more potatoes. Potatoes! Unfortunately, we're kind of nerfed. You got to eat them just so frequently now that it almost makes it not really worthwhile. Um, but yeah, anyway. I've been growing these big trees, the big spruce trees. Uh, and it didn't re really take me very long to realize just how beneficial they actually are uh, compared to the normal spruce trees. Uh, this is my spruce tree farm, more or less. Um, it looks as natural as I can make it. I didn't want to just make it like a, a production farm. I just wanted it to look sort of nice um, and still give me the wood that I needed for all the builds because I love the way that the spruce logs look. Uh, as much as I love the dark oak planks look, the spruce logs match with it so well. Um, but spruce logs are a hot commodity. So I started to... Uh, plant these big ones, the giant spruce trees, and boy, does it ever make a difference. Because you can basically, the same as jungle trees, the same as the dark oak, uh, create a little stairway up and then mine down. You just get stacks and stacks and stacks of wood by doing it this way uh, compared to uh, planting four individual trees. You don't get that much wood, I think. Because I think this gives you more wood than four individual trees, easily. Like, three times more per tree. So, definitely, 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 definitely. <laughs> Wasn't that a, a an old Looney Tunes character? Something like that? I don't know. I don't remember. Um, 
this is still a problem, obviously. Um, I wanted to make this whole lake one block deeper just so that the little slimes drown. Um, whoops! Uh oh. Oh my god. If I had been one step higher, I would have died. These are not feather falling, they're just normal rubber booties. Oh man. <laughs> and I was so close to falling into that. Could you imagine if I had done that too? It would have been pretty amazing. Um, I'm trying to level up to get another pick. I want... Silk Touch is fine. Uh, but I want Fortune. And I I used 30 levels. And I got an Unbreaking 3 Efficiency 4. Which is fine for just base mining, you know. Um, it's not bad. But... I don't want a mining pick. I want a pick that I could use on the stuff that I've already mined. You know? So, uh, that's kind of what I'm going for right now. Look at this. The old archway for the bridge. That Fabe then uh, completely reworked and looks so much better. Thanks again to Fabe. Um... What did I come down here for? Oh yeah, I remember. I didn't even come. I didn't want to go all the way down here. I fell. <laughs> um, I don't know if I'll finish too much more in this room before the world download. I know that I really wanted to. Um, like I really, really, really wanted to, so that you guys could get the world download and then see all your names and stuff. But as I say, unless I skip some episodes, which is really unfortunate if I do that. Um, yeah, I could do that, and then maybe post them later, and I might just do that. It'll be kind of odd seeing, like, if I build this room, if I work on this room, and then I go and post episodes where I haven't done the work, it's kind of odd, uh, but... I do, I did want to get the names, at least, on the plaques and stuff, uh, like in this room especially, before the world download, which is coming in three days, which means that I'd have to post this one, because it's not going to be this episode, I don't have the names in front of me, it's impossible, um, but I would have to post this and then make the episode where I do the names, so that it's not so weird, it's... Man, what a, what a problem to have, right? Having too much content to post. I guess I'm fortunate. Um, here we go. These are so far the blocks that I have. I used uh, some diamond for that pick. And I'm going to have to use three more for another pick as soon as I'm at level 30. Um, let's see. I hear that stone is the worst block for giving you levels, but I'll take anything at this point. Yeah, it barely gave me anything. Um, Alright. I'm going to take this and just chuck it. Why is it even there? What I might do, before I get to building, and this will give me some time to talk about what I wanted to talk about this episode. I'll figure out, I'll figure out if I'm posting this episode first. If I do... Then you'll see this episode, and then don't be confused, you'll see a bunch of episodes that kind of happen before this one. So you might see things and, and stuff that aren't finished in one episode, but they're they're finished in this one. <laughs> it's hard to, hard to explain. But I'm going to walk over to Fabes. He's building something. I haven't checked it out. I know that he's been working on it. Uh, he's been making tweets about it and such. So I wanted to go check it out. It's his donor room, similar to uh, my donor room, how I have it here. Uh, he actually has his right here. So I said that before in an episode that it's kind of neat that he wanted to build his donor room here. And that's literally, um, if you count from this point to this point, that's maybe, maybe 20 blocks away from mine. So that's kind of interesting that we both chose this area. Oh, God. Oh, this might be bad. In the water I go, please. Thank you. Oh, I don't have time to fight that guy. I wish 
I did because I'm collecting ender pearls. But my armor being the way it is, my durability on my iron leggings is literally one. That slime might take it out. Um, <laughs> I don't want to be attacked right now. I don't have a helmet. I'm not ready for battle. Because I've been saving all my diamond. I got blocks. I got I got to save it for what you guys are, are doing there. Kill. There you go. Future site of Fabe's building of donations. And here might be it. I don't know. Or he's digging this area out. I know that Fabe... Oh god, this is gonna... My pants are dying right this second. I can tell you right now. These pants... Kiss them goodbye. Mwah. Goodbye, pants. You were good pants. I liked you. Oh god, Flambo! No! Oh god! Uh, water. I don't have a bucket. Uh, it's empty. Okay, well, I'm, I'm okay anyway. Oh. I hate flame boat skeletons more than anything. I love creepers more than flame bow skeletons. Um, alright, so is this... This might be just his building shack. Which I think it is. Um, oh yeah. He's... What? That's all hardened clay. That's amazing, actually. And the glass, it's its messed up because of Optifine, I think. The connected textures looks transparent. You just see the number 64. You don't see the glass. Um, but if I were to take one and place it, it would definitely be glass. Um, wow, that's a lot of hardened clay, actually. I'm kind of in shock about that still. Because uh, I was actually looking for some hardened clay so I could get the red stained clay. And... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I could have just come here and stolen it all. No, I wouldn't have done that. But uh, it's interesting. I, I, It took me a long time to get a stack in 48. Um, and he's got stacks upon stacks. So he must have... Uh, the swamp is the best area to get clay in, as you can see. Look at all that clay. He probably just went... Uh, and went to the swamp over here or something. Probably not over here, because that's right above my my pit, and it would have just leaked into my donor room. Uh, why I went this way was actually to go to Fabe's house, his actual house. Uh, follow the white flag. Actually, maybe I'll follow these little torches that he has set up. And go this way. Because I want to test out his skeleton spawner and uh, see if I can get some levels that way. How many levels dead skellies get you? Um, I was at the spider farm that I have set up. I wanted to rework that. Um, but I'll be doing that after the world download. Because world download stuff at this point is a little bit more important. Getting things looking nice as opposed to getting things functional. So that'll be after the world download. Um, I'll go down the stairs rather than jump. But, alright. So now that we're here, I'm going to test out the skeleton thing. This is not... You're supposed to be in your home. Goodbye. Skeleton spawner. There's skeletons spawning around it. Um, now that I'm here, I can talk about what I wanted to talk about as I test out the levels here. I only need to get to 30. Um... It? Oh yeah, I want that. Yeah, I want that open. Right. What kind of stuff does he have? Are these from skeletons? I wonder. My pants are gone. I wonder if you'd mind if I took... Probably wouldn't, because they're just crappy chain pants. But I got no pants right now. Got two pairs of rubber booties from some creature. Hey! Maybe I'll get some from him. Actually, I, sh I should crush him. I'll just sit here and wait. And while we sit here and wait, I'll talk about what I wanted to talk about. And uh, just kind of look around here for a second. But I wanted to talk about racism, which is a pretty important topic to talk about. That is cool. I really like that. Um, it's very important to talk about it because... I was actually reading uh, a blog from a friend, from a friend who happens to be Korean, 
and he was talking about racism and how it affects him, especially in the gaming community. Um, and it was kind of interesting, the whole conversation that he was having about it, how he's had to basically uh, work around it um, because he's proud of who he is. He's proud of what he is, where he's from, the culture he's a part of, and so on. But that he still gets people coming in for no apparent reason at all and, it's, and saying things to him that are very racist and, and hurtful. Uh, trying to be hurtful. I mean, a person can have thick skin. I know I have thick skin. People can say real crappy things to me all the time. I don't let it get to me. That's just, you know, I, I go with the flow. And if people try to get in the way of the flow, well, they can't. Because the, the tide is strong. What am I trying to say? I don't know. But, needless to say, you can have thick skin... But it doesn't mean that the things that people are saying aren't hurtful. Um, trying to be intentionally hurtful. That's interesting. I like that. Um, <laughs> all the skeletons just dying. Except for the ones in gold. They'll be alive. But very weak. There you go. And did it give any... Yeah, it gave a few pants and things. That hopper's got to be almost full of... No? Hmm. I'm going to say, how does it deal with certain things like uh, the, the pants and stuff that can't stack together? What does it do in that situation? I don't... I don't really know. But anyway, you can have thick skin, but the things that people say are still hurtful. And that's what he was commenting on. And I thought that I would talk about it too. Um, just kind of my perspective of it, and I think I've talked about this in the past as well, because I come from a, well, I'm Canadian, <laughs> and that does, as funny as it sounds, it really does have a role to play in, in why I think what I think, and it's kind of funny that it is the way that it is, that Canadians tend to be a little bit more tolerant of other cultures and other people and, and things of that nature. Um, as a whole, and I think a lot of it is because we are, I'd almost go so far as to say the word forced, we're, we're thrown into basically a giant pool of mixed races and, and different cultures, and uh, we have something uh, where I'm from in, in Winnipeg here called Folklorama, where it's uh, two weeks straight of nothing but cultural events from different cultures, from Japanese to Polish to Korean to uh, Italian to you name it and what you do is you go to these different they call them pavilions uh, in community centers where they have showcases of uh, all the different culture and dancing and food the food is what I go for I had this really awesome Jamaican food uh, the last folklorama man it's so good um, so you're kind of, you're, you're in that kind of a world where it's not only normal to be different in, in that way, of a different race, of a different culture, of a different everything like that. Um, you're also, you're, you learn very early on, uh, especially with events like that Folklorama, you learn to enjoy them, not just accept them, but also to... Uh, enjoy them and I think that really helps and I know that for a fact uh, ooh, I'm gonna take these I'll take them right now and wear them those rubber booties be mine and actually the levels that I'm getting are quite nice uh, going up quite fast you know I think spiders are maybe just a tiny bit faster because they seem to spawn faster. I got the double spawners going. Um, anyway, back on the topic. I think that because of the way that we're raised in Canada here, uh, and I'm not saying, let me just kind of take an aside here and say, you know, other, other countries uh, are very tolerant as well. Americans can be very tolerant too, uh, but I just... 
I I notice it more having traveled uh, not a fair amount, but enough to experience different cultures and different countries and things like that. Um, I know that where I'm from, we tend to be pretty tolerant. At least these days we are. And that's not to say that racism doesn't happen where I'm from in Canada. It does. It's very, very, very unfortunate when it does. Uh, and it tends to be the older generations. Um, but it's very rare. I'll say that much. It's very rare. Now, because of that, what I was getting to, the reason that I wanted to mention it at all, um, is because, you know, maybe I'm, I'm innocently ignorant of that kind of a problem. Um, if you were to ask me my opinion on racism, I'm still of the... See, yeah, it's stacking now, so you gotta almost... I almost have to just make myself a chest here very quickly. Um, hold on, I'll get to that thought in a second. I just want to continue doing what I'm doing, so... In order to do so, I need to make some chests, but I have nothing to make. Yeah, I do. Make a chest real quick, and then I'll get that topic out of the way. Here we go. Just throw all my stuff in there for now, and then I'll take care of the stuff in those chests there. Let me just grab it. Uh, some of this stuff. Yeah, look at this. It's stacking up. There we go. I don't know why I really took the bones. The bones are the least of the, the issues here. Um, and I can't even put them away uh, in there. But here we go. We'll combine some stuff together. Like that. Actually, I should look at what these bows have sometimes. I'm just getting rid of them at this point. But if I saw a flame bow, I might consider it. Uh, anyway, let's get back to the topic. Like I said, I might be innocently ignorant of that kind of an issue uh, because of the way that I was raised, because of the fact that I am in a country where it's very tolerable, um, to the point where I almost have the mentality... Hello. I almost have the mentality that, uh, you know... People should be able to laugh at themselves. And I've always said this, you know, and I've said this, you know, when I make fun of uh, the Skydas Minecraft fans, you know, you should be able to laugh at yourself, uh, especially if you're a fan, and, you know, know that it's a stereotype, and that stereotypes, to me, are funny. That's And, like I said, if it's offensive, I'm deeply sorry because that's not my intention so it's it's kind of hard for me to even acknowledge you know when it's not my intention it's it's very hard for me to acknowledge i easily can go to someone of a different culture and i i will they they could be good friends of mine and I can go up to them and say the most racist, hurtful thing you could imagine. And I do it in out of complete love, comedy, and, and humor. Without really even thinking for a second that, well, you know, maybe. Maybe it really, maybe it does affect them. Maybe they don't like that. Maybe they don't find it funny as I do. Maybe... Maybe they went through some hard times, uh, you know, growing up uh, in a culture that doesn't accept them very easily, you know. If I were to go up to someone who had been bullied by someone who, who was racist, and then I'm, I'm making jokes, that I can see how that definitely wouldn't really be funny. Um... And for that, I, I'd be deeply sore. You gotta be kidding me. You gotta be kidding me! Seventh death, right on camera at least. 
Ah! Uh, man, that sucks! Right in the middle of my heartfelt talk. Fabe has the darkest house. Now his floor is all blown up, too. Ah! Uh, oh, what do I have to fix? Anyway, um, what I was saying is I can easily see how what I say, even though I don't think that it's very hurtful, could be hurtful. And what do I do in that kind of situation? What do I have to think about? You know, I don't want to change who I am, and I still have the mentality... Uh, you know, or I use my word, the mentology. I, I have the mentology that people should be accepted. Here's the thing. <laughs> let me start over. Let me just, not completely starting over, but let me say this. I love everybody. I love everybody no matter what culture they're from. I love everybody of all shapes and sizes and colors and creeds. I've said this before, I'll say it again. You know, there's nothing... A skin color would never make me hate someone. Someone's attitude makes me hate someone. You know, I wouldn't hate someone because of where they're from. That's ridiculous. Um, so, when I say things that might be construed as being racist... In my intention, I'm doing it because, in my mind, it's the most ridiculous, the most ridiculous notion. It's like making fun of someone for being purple. You know, it's not... Why? What's the point? I think that it doesn't make sense. It's a joke. It's, to me, that's practically comedy. And that, for that reason, is is why I would be so quick. As to, oh no, did stuff go in there that I care about? Can't really tell, so I'll jump in, grab all my trash. Look at how dark it is here, Fabe. Um, I don't have any stone on me. I'll, I could maybe go look. He has a chest somewhere. Some stairs and stuff. That creeper really did some damage. Man! But, I guess what I'm saying is, you know, if... If someone out there has felt offended by something that I've said... I know that in some videos, I've put on, you know, fake Mexican accents. And I, I say that, even, even that, saying that sounds rather right. Uh oh he has these blocks here. I wonder if he was counting... No, maybe not. Even that sounds pretty racist, but like I said, I, I think that racism is so ridiculous that someone would actually use it to hurt another person that I almost, I don't see why it hurts people, you know? Um, which in itself is a topic of great debate. It really is. Come on, Fabe, don't you have stone somewhere? Nowhere, really? Let's see, furnaces, some of that, anything to cook it up. Where's all the stuff I had? I had more stuff than that. Did it get blown up? At least my diamond picks are there. I had some spruce. Oh, I put it in the chest. Right, 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 right. Right, 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 right. Ah, that's what I was looking for. Um, but this is a topic of great debate is using certain words. Certain words that I won't repeat because of how negative they are to people, how much they they hate those words. And meanwhile, I sit here thinking, why why does a word why do you get so offended by a word? You know, don't you know the saying sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me? And I, I think about that. That's something that I learned from a very, very, very early age. And when people call other people different names, different derogatory names, especially for different races, 
Um, it's ridiculous to me. It doesn't make sense. It's the most stupid thing that someone might actually say that to hurt another person. But on that same note, I find it just as ridiculous that someone would be offended by it. Does that make sense? That's kind of what I was trying to say this whole time. Is that I don't... Maybe I don't understand why a person would be upset about it. And maybe that's the education that I need. Like I said, I, I am innocently ignorant. Because of the culture that I'm from. Because of where I grew up. Because of how I grew up. I grew up in a family uh, that often has people married in. Who are of different races and, and beliefs and things like that. So, in my own family, there are people of, of mixed race and of, of different races and nationalities. And I never learned for race to be thought of as a bad thing, you know? That's kind of just... I, don't, I still don't think that I, I might be explaining it correctly. I hope that you guys are kind of getting what I'm saying. Is that... I, I don't excuse anybody for being racist or for saying something that is intentionally hurtful. Um, like I said, I don't hate people for what they are uh, or for what they believe in. I hate people for their attitudes. If you go and attack someone for their race or for what they believe in or for anything like that, then you are genuinely a jerk. You are not a nice person. You deserve to be hated. Uh, but I don't... I, I Personally, I don't see race as something that people should get upset about. It's, it's an odd thing that I'm trying to describe. Um, with that said, I do know... This is kind of the, the second topic of this. I do know that there are people out there who do say racial things to be hurtful, intentionally hurtful. And I just realized right this second, it's sinking in that I just lost almost 30 levels. That sucks so bad. That sucks so bad. Oh my god. I am lighting this place up just a little bit more, Fabe. Right there, I'm putting a torch. I can see the dark spots. Look at all the dark spots. I know I know that the... See, it's tough. You want it light, but you don't want it to hamper the spawning of these guys. I wish there was a way to have, like, curtains put up, you know, when you want to use the spawner. Uh, anyway... Yeah, I still don't... I don't think that I'm getting through the right message. And like I said, you know what? There's no excusing being uh, hurtful to anybody. Um, and I want to just... that That's kind of what I explain is, you know, I if I ever said anything, if I ever did anything for pure comedic value, it wasn't... Oops. It wasn't because I was being intentionally hurtful. Um, and like I said, I actually, I really care about all people, all kinds of colors. And I admit this openly on camera right now, that I myself, I don't look it, but I myself um, am of a mixed blood. I have, I have a mixed race in me. Uh, half of my family is French. And the other half is Aboriginal, uh, Indian, not not like from India, but like North North American Indian, uh, American Indian, whatever you want to call it, um, Canadian Indian. Uh, but the indigenous people, more or less, is what I'm saying. That's about an eighth of me is mixed that way, which is why I don't really look it. But, you know, if I were to give you my resume, I've worked for, I worked for one of the Aboriginal councils in this city.
who were working for the support of Aboriginals. I worked for the Human Rights Commission here, dealing with people who, who actually had race issues. That's on my resume. Both of those things are on my resume. And I myself have Aboriginal blood in me. I, I don't find anything wrong about that. I don't find anything... Like, if someone were to come up to me and, and send me some hate because of it, it just wouldn't really compute. It would be like someone coming up to me and saying, you know, I, I think your nose is ugly. Like, so what? You know? I'm glad you think it's ugly because I don't want you liking me, <laughs> you know? It's just one of those things that maybe it's a combination of how I was raised and the fact that I've got thick skin. I don't find racism to affect me. And I think that, and this is something maybe to consider. And like I said, you know, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. But this is my, my personal opinion. The whole Time Shot series here is my personal opinion. You know? And I can have the wrong opinion. I've said that in the past. But if you let racism affect you, racism will affect you. Does that make sense? It's kind of funny to say it that way. But... There we go. Level 16 already. We're getting back up there. Um, but what I'm basically saying is... Oh, I'm out of food. I'm out of food. That's not what I'm saying. But I gotta head back. Uh, I think I'll stick to my spiders. Actually, let's just take the the nether poetel. Um, what I'm saying is when you let derogatory words or the attitude that people have get to you or affect you, that in itself is just as detrimental as those words themselves. I think that is... You can quote me on that one. That was a good one, I think. You shouldn't let it affect you. And if you do, that is actually part of the problem. I often say to people, you know, who I see getting really upset uh, over what someone said. One of the biggest ones that I can remember, and I'm sure a lot of you guys remember it too, Michael Richards, who used to be on Seinfeld, Kramer, was at a comedy club being heckled. And when he was heckled, he lashed out and said some things that he regretted. Now, people got really up in arms about it. And... For starters, I'll say this. The, the people who got up in arms were actually right. Because like I said earlier in this episode, if you, if you do it out of hate, which he was, he was in the heat of a moment, you know, and I've often said this in, like, when I'm playing on Hypixel and I'm getting really heated, or someone's really getting at me, especially if they're getting at me, like uh, calling me names or, or accusing me of things. Uh, not so much hacking, but of getting things for free, or so on and so forth. You know, things that bother me, let it get it under my skin, I might say things that I regret. Nothing that bad, thankfully, but I can see kind of why it happened. I can kind of see how it built up to that point, but it was not excusable. You should never say things like that out of hatred. You shouldn't say anything bad out of hatred. Even if he hadn't said anything derogatory, he shouldn't have lashed out at them. Even if he said nothing bad at all, his lashing out was what was bad. Not really so much in the way that he lashed out. And that, that is what I was going to get to. Is why I remember that and why it became such a big deal. Is because it's still a big deal. The fact that I mention it and probably half of you watching will either remember it or or will know exactly the connotation it had before I even mentioned what it was about. Um, that in itself, I think, got blown way out of proportion. 
And I, I, I remember making a comment to a friend at that time when it happened. Uh, I loved his comedy. I loved Michael Richards as a character on Seinfeld. I was always a fan of that show. Uh, I'm, I'm a fan of him as a person. I think that he has the ability to laugh at himself. I saw the Larry David um, Curb Your Enthusiasm episode where they actually poked fun at it. And I think that was so strong of him to go out and actually be able to poke fun at himself. Because um, that's at the end of the day what people should be able to do. And I, like I said, I remember making a comment to a friend that I love what he what he did. I loved his comedy. I loved him as a person. Um, I think that people let what he said affect them much more than it should have. And that's kind of the whole topic that I've been trying to express this episode is, like I said, if you let it affect you, it will affect you. The fact that racism is even a thing is because people let it get them down. People don't learn to embrace who they are and love who they are so much that they actually let things like that get to them. If you are truly proud to be who you are, racism should be laughable, just like I find it. I'm proud of who I am. I'm proud that my, my great-great-great-grandparents were who they were. I appreciate who my grandparents were. I appreciate who my parents are. I appreciate the cultures I'm a part of. I appreciate the culture that I'm a part of right now and, and what my culture, uh, my, my family's culture is. I love it. I love it and I embrace it. And is that a Canadian thing? I don't know. I really don't know. But it seems that to some people it's a very difficult thing to to do is to embrace who you are and love who you are. And I think that, you know, if you truly do, racism doesn't even exist. And maybe that's not the right wording. It does exist, but there that's the the debate. I remember on the Colbert report. Um I'm sure you guys know of it, Stephen Colbert on the Comedy Channel or whatever it's on. Uh, late night TV. He plays a character, a uh, very right wing conservative character. And one of the things that he says, though, is that he doesn't see color. He's blind to color. He's colorblind, is what he says. He says that very jokingly, but he says it true. You know, like, I don't see color. I don't see race. Everybody's the same type of thing. Um,. And I never forget, I'll never forget this, he had a guest on who was an African-American, uh, kind of a, someone who, who, he often talks about racial issues and, and things of that nature, and, oops, that's not what I want to do, um, he often talks about that kind of stuff in his, his career, he talks about racial issues, and... Colbert said, well, I'm colorblind. And the the guy said to him, you know, that's that's not right. You shouldn't be colorblind. You should be able to see color um, and appreciate every color. If you say that you're colorblind and that everyone's the same, that's not true. You should see differences and you should appreciate the differences. And that really did stick with me. I mean, that that was so strong to me. And it's kind of what I've been saying this episode. You know, if if someone's different, if you're different, if you're from a different culture, a different race, different country, different whatever, if you speak a different language, if you have an accent, if you if you have a different religion, you should be able to love it and laugh at it. If someone says something about you, laugh at it. It's it's so ridiculous that it should hurt you. And that is the point I've been trying to make. Um, going back to Michael Richards, like I said, on Curb Your Enthusiasm, they actually had an episode where Michael Richards 
was constantly seen uh, in arguments, heated arguments with an African American and someone else, other African Americans uh, in the episode saw this from afar, didn't know the context, and were getting really upset about it. And I think there's two points there. One, Larry David, the creator of the show, was extremely strong in almost showing the exact same point that I'm trying to make, is that you should be able to laugh at yourself and laugh at the fact that, you know, that racism is even a thing. That's point one. Point two he was also kind of showcasing in a very artistic way that people are very quick to judge. People are very quick to get hurt or feel hurt or get upset about things such as racism when I think my personal opinion should be the standard. Now, it's very, very difficult, I know, uh, for people who have to live with it um, who do go through the hatred side of it uh, and this is the last point I'm gonna make and it's the most serious point of it uh, and I did touch upon it is that when someone does it out of hate that is so very wrong I mean there's no there's no excusing it it's caused so many deaths in this world for no reason no reason unjustified and it's completely wrong. Completely, completely... I left everything of mine at Fabes. <sighs> I'll run back. Um, but it's completely wrong. It's completely wrong. I gotta just keep repeating that. I don't understand how someone could say those kinds of things. And in addition to that, I just... Eh? That didn't... This was Fabe's portal, I thought. It must be a linking error. But I just don't understand how people could could do that. But they do. There are people in this world, people from the past, who thought terrible, terrible, horrible things of people who were of different races, different colors, different everything like that. And honestly... My heart goes out to anybody who had to experience that, who still has to experience that. Uh, it's not right. And you guys deserve way more love than you get. It's extremely difficult to be able to laugh at yourself um, or appreciate who you are when you are being spit on um, or hated for who you are. You know, like I'm using that metaphorically. Uh, when someone looks down at you and and is constantly telling you when a, whole governments can be like that, it's sickening. It sickens me that that still happens, that level of hatred for absolutely no reason. Um, and for that reason, I think that we should fight to to protect people from... It's really just ignorance. At the end of the day, people who think poorly of others because of who they are, are ignorant. And we have to be strong, we have to stand together and stop that kind of ignorance from happening. Um, will I stop saying the things that I say to friends? <laughs> of course it's only to friends. Like I said, some people don't take it uh, as, as easily as others. I want to be able to say whatever I want to say at any time and know and have my friends know and the people that I talk to know that I'm not a hateful person and I don't mean to hate or hurt. But there are people out there, like I say, that that really do feel negatively about it. And they are idiots. They are They are the biggest losers on this planet. You can't let those people get you down. People like that are, are getting fewer and fewer and fewer, thankfully. And I want to be able to live in a world where we can all laugh about it, where we can, you know, just be at peace with each other. It sounds like the hippie notion. Really, it does. 
But you know, some th- some of the things that they s- that they used to say, the old hippies of the '60s, some of the things they used to say were were kind of right, kind of the way that we should be thinking. You know, love everyone for who they are. You know, that's the culture that I live in in my head. And so this is my public apology to anybody who I might have offended who doesn't quite understand the world that my brain lives in. Um, I live in a world where we are all friends, where we all get along. And I think personally, more people need to start living in that world. It would be the whole, the whole universe would be a better place if we all lived on the world where we all loved each other. And I think that's where I'm going to end this episode. Thank you guys for watching. Um, I didn't get like anything done in this episode that I said I wanted to do. I was going to start building, and I didn't. I think I mined a total of like five blocks. But still, I will try to get the donor room out and ready for the map update. I think I'm going to really ponder over it, um, and we'll see what we can do. Uh, but thank you guys for watching. Like this video. Subscribe if you haven't already, and do all those other awesome things that people do, including... Uh, donating, I did get a very generous donation the other day, uh, which it actually made me almost weepy. I ad- I admit fully, as a as a strong man, uh, it covered some bills that I I had no clue how I was gonna cover, and and for that I appreciate it. Um, thank you so much. Your names will all go into the uh, the room down there, the donor room. And 50%. So 50% of that very generous donation will go to charity uh, probably at the end of the month. Uh, So thank you so much for watching again. We'll see you next time on TimeShot. Guys, enjoy the map download. You can check it out on the Reddit. Link is in the description. Bye-bye.